The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Praise and glory to God. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these things that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, And you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who has descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ the word. In all. As I mentioned uh, in my welcome to you all this morning, we as a hahi today celebrate this Sunday as Trinity Sunday, Te Tokotoru Tapu. It is the Sunday that follows Pentecost, which we celebrated last week. This day is important because it recognizes and celebrates the Trinitarian God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, as we declare each Sunday in our affirmation of faith, our tikanga whakapunga. This is the understanding of God that comes from interpreting Scripture. In Jesus' own teaching and the Council of Nicaea in the 3rd century when the Church agreed to its understanding of the identity of God. Jesus said to his followers, to his followers, to Nicodemus in particular, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. He was imparting his knowledge to them about the identity of God. God is someone that could be understood in a parental way. Someone who is fatherly and relational. He taught his disciples to pray to God as our Father, from Matthew and Luke's Gospels. And God as someone who is spirit. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth, from John 4. And in his teaching that Jesus himself was part of the Godhead. The Father and I are one, from John 10. Nicodemus a wealthy religious leader, came to visit Jesus secretly under cover of night to express his appreciation for Jesus' ministry and gain further insight into Jesus' teaching. Jesus cut right to the heart of Nicodemus' need. No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. 
Nicodemus was familiar with the concept of spiritual rebirth. When a Gentile converted to Judaism, he was said to be reborn. However, Nicodemus still confused Jesus' words with physical rebirth. The words born again in this context mean a combination of things. They imply a radical change of some kind and rebirth or renewal of a spiritual nature. Jesus was incorporating the definition of spiritual rebirth, which entails being radically born a second time from above. And that, according to Jesus, is the only way to heaven. Jesus went on to elaborate on the nature of this new birth, stating that it is a water and spirit birth. Some people believe that the phrase water and spirit incorporates both physical and spiritual birth. Water, referring to physical birth, which begins after a woman's water breaks, and the spirit re uh, representing the new life that God offers us. Others perceive water as a symbol of being cleansed from sin at our baptism. According to this interpretation, water represents a cleansing agent that transforms us as we listen to God's word. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. From 1 Peter. While the Spirit speaks of God's Holy Spirit who works through the rebirth within us, from Titus 3, he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and the renewal of the Holy Spirit. Jesus further informed Nicodemus that this rebirth is like the wind. The wind is independent. We cannot control its direction. New birth from God is similar in that it is the work of God alone. Although, although we cannot completely explain it or understand it, we can witness it in the effects in the life of a believer. All of us have been born again. If we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, and been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are a new creation. The old self is cast aside, and the new person, with an identity in Christ, now lives. That is you and I, Fano. The Bible teaches us that God offers us a brand new start when we give over our lives to Him. The Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. We are unable to be diligent in following God's commands that we can win his approval. The only determining factor in our being made right with our maker is the rebirth, which he offers us through Jesus Christ. A transformation so voluntary that it can only be termed a new creation. We have in the identity of the Trinitarian God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as made known through Scripture, and lived in the human form, in the person of Christ, and descended as the Advocate and Comforter in the Holy Spirit, to be with us forever. In the Trinity, we have the assurance that we will never be alone that we are equipped to do God's work in the world. I will not leave you orphaned. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything, said Jesus to his disciples on the night before he died. The Holy Spirit energizes believers, those who have stepped forward in baptism to be a follower of Christ, just as our tupuna in the faith came forward and served and whose story is reflected in these tukutuku panels. They are our model to which we can do God's work in our community today. The Spirit of God calls people to be Jesus' followers, then invigorates them to be shaped by Jesus and follow him. 
There are prophecies that say God in the last days will pour out his spirit on all flesh. And at Pentecost, Peter in his sermon in Acts 2, that's precisely what happens. We heard last week how Peter had reassured the crowds that the people weren't drunk, but had received an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that had enlivened them in a most remarkable way. In the past, it was one or two people that God had chosen to receive his spirit, prophets or kings or people of special calling. In our lesson, we heard that the prophet Isaiah was granted a vision of seeing the glory of God. But it is no longer just one or two selected few. It is now all individuals called by God, caught up in this new movement, who are people called to be God's people. That is you and I. Not just following him distantly, but inhabited by and animated by his breath, his Holy Spirit. God's people are those who are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of adoption. Paul speaks about us not having a spirit of slavery so that we do not backslide in our faith, but bearing witness that we are heirs to God. Only the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives can empower us to think and act in that way. For if we believe in our hearts that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life, then we ourselves will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And these words of Jesus will have led to our salvation. Amen.